Please welcome Brian Finkelstein. Hello. Um, so as the holidays approach, I, uh, I realize that uh, I, I really hate holidays. Uh, not the holidays, but holidays. Um, and it, it's just another piece of the minutia of my life that is a cliche. However, the reason I don't like the holidays is, is my family is, uh, well, it's a typical New York family. My father's Jewish and my mother's Irish. And, uh, but my, my Jewish father, uh, to him, he's, a, he's agnostic, he's atheist, he's lazy, but he, <laughs> like Jewish to him means like cynical, it's like synonymous with misanthrope. <laughs> and, I, and I can get on board with that, you know? Uh, and my mother, Irish and Protestant, and like, uh, she's really into her Irish culture, and, and uh, she loves the whole holiday thing that goes with it. Like, like Christmas, she loves it, even though every year she has to beg me and my brother and sister to go to church with her, and she loves Halloween, when I was like, she made me dress up in Halloween, like through high school and even a little bit beyond. And that's, that's, that's awkward for everybody. And then, and her, like she loves St. Patrick's Day because she's Irish. And, uh, and so she loves to have like corned beef and hash, which just is bad, you know? And uh, not even nutrition, it's just bad. And, uh, and she, she likes that and she likes traditional Irish things. And um, one of the things she does every year is she goes to, uh, she goes to Ireland once a year uh, to see her roots, um, which is, Kind of ironic, uh, but so she um, she goes there every year, and she always wants me, my brother or sister, to go with her. And if, my brother and sister have both gone, but I I refuse because I you know if I I don't Europe if if you're gonna to take if you're gonna take a vacation like go to China or Africa or if you, you know you go to Soho go to Europe so you know what I mean we live in New York you don't need to go to Europe we are in Europe um, so so she always wants me to go and I never really can relate to it and until a few years ago, and I, it started, I was working at this store, it's, um, it's called Kiehl's, it's a skincare store just over a couple blocks down, and um, they're owned by the French, see, the Europe thing, it's, uh, uh, and so, uh, that's a whole other thing. Um, so, I'm working there, and uh, I work there with all these people, and there's a, there's a woman who's hired for Christmas help for, um, for the holidays, and she, uh, she, she's, her name's Aideen, she's Irish, and I don't really know her well, because um, it's a very busy time in retail, and so she's working there, and I'm working there. And, um, but she's from Ireland, and so she says uh, she's going there for the holidays, for like uh, right before Christmas through the New Year's and a little bit beyond. And she wants to know if anybody wants to come with her, because, because chick tickets are really cheap, and so like all the people I work with who I know really well, we're all like, yeah, let's all do it. So we all bought tickets, um, or so I thought, until I was going to Ireland by myself. <laughs> Um, Aideen was already there because she went and so I was going to, you know, I thought everyone was going but I was going to meet Aideen there. So I land in Dublin and I call Aideen at the number she emailed me and uh, ask her, you know, passive aggressively say, how do I get to your apartment in Dublin? Am I going to take a cab? And, you know, just expecting her to say she's going to pick me up. But Aideen's like, no, you should rent a car. There's no really other way to get to my apartment. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I mean, drive on the wrong side of the street, and it's an adventure, whatever. It's Ireland, it can't be. So I go to her house, I go to her apartment, and we, uh, we end up going out to dinner that night at a Chinese food restaurant, an authentic Irish Chinese restaurant. And uh, while we're sitting there, people are smoking. And uh, this is where I start to learn a little bit about Aideen, um, that she hates cigarette smoke. And, uh, and so she, you know, I say, oh, me too. And um, I smoke. And, uh, but, I, but I say me too be because, you know, whatever. I'm an American. We're in another country. I'm peacekeeping. That's what we do. So, but she says, oh, good. I'm glad you don't smoke. And I never really said I don't smoke, just to be fair to myself. I just said I, I don't like it. And I don't. It's disgusting. But I like to smoke. And, and so, and so uh, you know, we're sitting there, and so this starts this weird relationship we have. So she has an itinerary for my vacation. She wants to see all of Ireland. Um, I'm like, great, it's not that big of a country, whatever. So she decides we're going to go to, uh, up to Westport, and then over to Ackle Island, and then down to Wicklow Mountains, and, uh, and oh, there's the Cliffs of Moher or whatever, and, uh, and down <laughs> back to Dublin. So I'm like, awesome, okay, great. So we get in the car, and I'm like, all right, so I'll drive first. And she's like, oh, no, I don't drive. I'm like, oh, that's great, you don't. Um, all right, awesome. So we drive to the first place. We get like halfway between Dublin and Westport in some city that, you know, unless you live there, you wouldn't know. And, um, and even then, you might not know. And, uh, and we go, we stay in this like bed and breakfasty thing, and we go to a pub at night for dinner, because um, it's the only thing open. And that's when I learned that she's a recovering alcoholic. 
Now I'm like, I'm in Ireland, I want a couple pints of Guinness because I'm, you know, an alcoholic, but I'm certainly not recovering. And, uh, <laughs> and so, so I order a, a pint of beer and she looks at me like, like I am a, like a full on, like, like I'm Bukowski, you know? She's looking at me like, <laughs> Like, like, you know, like I, I you know, I, I shoot heroin. And, and I feel like I shoot heroin. I, I really wish I shot heroin. <laughs> so I, I, put, I, I take a sip of the Guinness, I'm like, oh, this is really strong, I'll just drink water. Because again, the peacekeeping thing. So we go to bed, and now we're starting to travel around. And this is every night. We go out to dinner, I have water, I have chips, but they're fries. And, and so, but I go back, I like the mayonnaise thing, that's cool. And so I, I go to my hotel room every night, and, um, and I'm, I'm sneaking, I'm like waiting till she goes to bed and I'm sneaking down and getting some beer and pack of cigarettes and I'm in my room like, like Anne Frank checking for lights underneath the door and I'm like, <laughs> I'm hiding. I actually started writing a journal because I really felt like, anyway, so, um, so we, we, we continue our trip and it's great and we're, you know, it's kind of fun. It's a really beautiful country. I, like I saw a lot of places that tourists don't see because, because I was there with, you know, somebody from the country, and so she showed me it, but we were doing a very American thing, which is, you know, you drive 19 hours, and then you're like, that's that, and you drive by it. And, <laughs> and, and then we were pulling up, af after five days, we pull, we pull into Wicklow, uh, where, her, where her father lives, and as we're pulling up, she tells me some more things about her, so uh, she tells me that she, uh, she uh, you know, she, her father um, is in a band, and he doesn't, like, cigarette smoke either. And uh, I was like, oh, well, you know, I don't smoke. And she goes, I, I know what you do every night, you know? <laughs> she's smart. Um, so she's like, and, and, and she's like, and, and they really don't, my father doesn't drink. He's not a recovering alcoholic, but he doesn't like alcohol. So, you know, just, you know, just chill out. And I was like, okay, fine. We're here for two days. That's nice. I'll relax. I'll sleep. I'll watch TV. And so we pull into their house and they come out and they greet us and we sit down and we have dinner. And um, they serve, uh, you know, just bad food, and, uh, <laughs> and, they, and they're really nice, and, and the conversation turns to the holidays, because it was just right after, it was January, so they're talking about Christmas, and, uh, and, I, and they, their Christmas was horrible. They usually have a great Christmas, but they had a horrible one because there was a new baby in the family that apparently was driving uh, Aideen's father really crazy, and, um, and, you know, I understand that because I like babies on TV, and uh, so... So we have this conversation, and, uh, and I say, you know, I hate the holidays, too. I hate, like, uh, you know, Christmas, and, and I, because my mom, and I hate, like, but I tell them I like Thanksgiving, because I'm, and I'm lying, but I'm peacekeeping, because I say, like, you know, I spend it with my family, and it's really nice, and the food's good, and it's not a religious holiday, so there's no, like, you know, there's no animosity, and just that whole guilt about killing everybody in this country, but that, you know, <laughs> whatever. And so, um, so, I, I don't mean whatever in a bad way. Uh, so, so, I didn't do it. And so, so anyway, uh, so we're... <laughs> So we're sitting there having this conversation, and so he's like, oh, I've always liked the idea of Thanksgiving, too, for all those same reasons. Um, but we don't celebrate. I'm like, well, you know, I know that. I'm an American, but I know that much. And so we go to bed, and the next morning I wake up, and Patty's up, and he's, he's excited about celebrating Thanksgiving. He wants to do it that day. He wants it to be his holiday, his, his everything. So I'm like, awesome. So he's like, oh, let's go get a turkey. So we drive around Wicklow where he lives, and there's no turkeys, and we drive. So I'm like, I remembered the Chinese food restaurant in Dublin. They were serving, I saw somebody eating turkey. So we drive three hours to Dublin to go get a turkey in a Chinese restaurant <laughs> for Thanksgiving to have in Wicklow. And, um, you know, whatever. So, so we do it, and I was just glad to be, you know, like he drove. It was awesome. <laughs> so we get the turkey, and, uh, and, we, and we're, we're walking through, like, Dublin, and everybody's, like, saying, hey, Patty, hey, Patty. And I'm like, wow, man, everybody, this guy's, like, the mayor or something. I'm like, hey, he's very nice. And so we get back to his house, and we sit down, and we have, boom, big turkey. And he goes down to his wine cellar, because he's got a really nice house. And he comes up from the wine cellar. He's like, oh, this is a bottle of wine that uh, Mick Jagger gave me. I'm like, awesome. But not so much because it's Mick Jagger, just because it's alcohol, and I, it was like a little shaky. So <laughs> Mick Jagger's nice too, but he wasn't there. So, uh, so we're drinking, I'm like, that's cool, that's cool. And then we go, we have finished that bottle of wine, and he goes downstairs, and he gets a bottle of, like, not scotch, but it was some other liquor, but I don't remember, and I don't want to make up a thing, because I want to be truthful. And so he brings it up, and it was from Van Morrison. And I'm like, wow, awesome, dude, cool, all right. Way. And so now his mom and his, uh, his daughter, Aideen, who I was there with, we're starting to get a little mad because we're drinking and we're getting loud and we're, you know, making stuff up because we're drunk. And I go to the bathroom and I'm walking down the hallway to the restroom and there's pictures of Patty and there's a picture of him with, with uh, Bill Clinton and there's a picture of him with Queen Elizabeth and there's a picture of him with the Pope. 
And I'm like, awesome, I wonder what kind of alcohol they sent him. So I go in the bath. <laughs> so I go in the bathroom and I come back and we sit down and we start drinking. And it, and it turns out that Patty is uh, the, the singer and founder of a band called The Chieftains. Um, I, I, at the time, I, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd heard of them, but you know, I don't know. But you know, I, I look at, you know, after investigating, it's sort of like being with Dylan here. And uh, so, I'm, so I'm, not as cool as Dylan, he's a nice guy though. Um, so, so, we're, so we're drinking and we're eating and we're thanks. And so finally his, his wife, uh, who was really, really cool, and his uh, daughter, 18, who I am now dear friends with, they decide to go to bed because they don't want to be around the alcoholics. And he's not an alcoholic. Um, uh, so they go to bed and they're like, before, you know, just do not break out the ponchi. I'm like, all right, what's the ponchi? <laughs> and they go to bed and two seconds later we're drinking ponchi. And, uh, <laughs> Ponchi is Irish moonshine, which is awesome. It's like it's so much better than ouzo or anything that the South has ever produced, and uh, and and I mean that one. Um, so so um, so we start drinking, we get drunk, and then Patty says, oh, "You want to see my room with my Grammys and my awards?" I'm like, "Yeah, whatever. This is getting surreal." So we walk down the hallway past the Pope and Clinton and the Queen, and we go into this room with all his his awards. I'm like, "Wow, this is really nice." And he sits down at the piano, and he tells me that he's uh. He's been unofficially commissioned uh, by some members of their government to, uh, to rewrite the Irish national anthem. <laughs> um, to, to have more of like a liberated from England feel to it because they really still think they're liberated, which is kind of funny. Um, so, so, we, so we start singing and um, I was trying to think of some of the lyrics that we wrote, but I, I was, you know, the punchy was really good, so I don't remember. I do remember at one point thinking to myself like, what, what rhymes with England sucks? And I... <laughs> And my first thought was uh, Irish luck, you know? But then I thought that might be offensive, so I never said it to him. But we did write some lyrics, and we got really drunk. We passed out like three, two, three, four in the morning. And I wake up the next morning around noon, early for me, and I come out of the room that I was staying at, and I'm wearing like a Yankee hat and a T-shirt and with a Rolling Rock faded label, and, uh, and like, you know, sweatpants. And I come walking into the living room, and there's the whole family by the fireplace, all dressed in their suits and everything, and they're being interviewed by the BBC. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh God, I need some water. So I like, try to skate around them. And Patty, who is the coolest guy in the world, pulls me over and intro introduces me uh, to, the, to the reporter as his son. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm there on the BBC and he like, explains that I went to school in New York since young, so I don't have an Irish accent. I'm just like, hey, what's up? You know, and I'm sitting there. <laughs> And I could see Aideen just like, at this point it was funny to everybody because it was just absurd. And um, so it was a great trip. And I got back and like, I stayed in touch with him via email. Um, this internet thing is really. So we, uh, we stay in touch and they came to, um, to New York, the, the chieftains, to play Carnegie Hall for St. Patrick's Day a couple years ago. And uh, they sent me tickets. So I invited my mom. And uh, we went. And uh, afterwards, we, we went out to dinner with like a bunch of the chieftains and some celebrity friends of his, and uh, my mom was so impressed by it, and um, now every year I go up to my mom's house up in upstate New York, and we have St. Patrick's Day, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if I feel Irish, but like, and, and I definitely still hate corned beef, but, um, but Patty every year sends me a bottle of punchy from Ireland, and we drink, <laughs> and I, I can get on board with that, you know, I can, so I guess I'm Irish. <laughs>